I get to the dressing room, and Eric Bischoff pulls me aside. And, and I've always been dumbfounded by the stupidity here. Um, he goes, I, I've got a couple ideas. I'm just going to run them by you. You go out. This is about 2.30 in the afternoon. You should go outside. Get on the mic. And you can start telling all the Canadian fans that uh, where the hell have they been? They haven't done anything for you lately. And then you cut this whole problem with just tear into the Canadian fans. Tell them what a uh, piece of shit they are. Kind of thing. And, I, and I said, you're kidding me. And he goes, how do you like it? Like he thinks I'm going to right. <laughs> you know, Eric, let's just stop for a second. Just stop everything. Just listen. This is a 2.30 in the afternoon. You could hear them chanting my name. I don't know how many, maybe 10,000 people outside the building chanting my name, and uh, which was really moving. But I mean, you could hear it in the dressing room. It was no exaggeration. I said, this, you're crazy. I would never do it. I will never do it. I will not refuse. I will not refuse to do it. And then he goes, I was like, okay. He goes, well, Holman's got an idea. Tell me how you like this. All right. And he goes, um, you do the thing with Goldberg. He spears you. You roll over. You take the jersey off. And you throw the jersey down. Goldberg's out. Here comes Hogan. Hogan walks out. Hogan comes out. He comes in the ring. You guys go to a high five. Hogan knees you in the stomach, beats, clubs you down, beats the shit out of you, and leaves you laying. I guess Hogan working with Goldberg. He goes, no. I said, am I working with Hogan? He goes, no. I said, well, why the fuck would I do it? Why would anybody do that? Why, why would you even, why is he even in there? All right. He goes, it's just everybody would fool everybody. So this is Eric Bischoff. This is what I will say about Eric Bischoff. He didn't have a clue about the wrestling business. He didn't understand that that is like the stupidest idea. And I said, that makes no sense whatsoever. I said, you're trying to build me for Goldberg. This is a great idea between me and Bill. And Eric was biting his fingernails about me turning Goldberg heel. Goldberg now is refusing to do any of it. He's got to, he doesn't, doesn't want to do any of the match now. Someone got under his skin and said that this was going to kill him. Right. This is going to kill him off. And I find myself going, this is such a good idea for television and drama. And it's going to be great for this crowd in this city. It's great for wrestling. I can't get these these morons to see how good this is. This is a really good idea, and it's good for them. And Bill will get his come up. He's going to kick my head off right. and just eat my brains in and do whatever he does to everyone else in a few, few days from now. But they could not get it. And finally, he's, uh, this is, does make me wonder about Eric Bischoff and his relationship with Hogan because he says you've got to talk to Hulk Hogan. If Terry says it's okay. I'll let, I'll let you do it. I walked right up to Terry with Eric. And I said, Terry, I said, I don't know what to tell you other than that. I don't think there's any reason for you to be out there. And I explained my whole position to him. And in fairness to Hulk, he looked at me and goes, Do I agree with you? I don't need to be out there. Why would I be out there? Hmm. And then I looked at Eric, and Eric's like, almost looked like a million pounds was off his back. Like, and then he let us do it. Right. Uh, then I went and talked to Goldberg, who was still pacing around like a Brahma bull up and down the halls that somebody was trying to, you know, and then he finally consented that he would kind of do it and kind of calm himself and kind of just, I think poor Bill had a lot of guys pulling a lot of different directions and I, I, I understand how, how confused he was because he was, he moved from, uh, right from out of nowhere to this huge position. Um, Bill's problem, I guess, and maybe it's fair to say that he didn't, didn't know who to trust. But uh, even that, I went out, I I didn't want to, I knew it would work for me, and I knew it would work for the angle, and then I wore that Hitman jersey and I wore Toronto Maple Leaf jersey on the Right. Um, if they had seen me wear that Toronto Maple Leaf jersey, they would have gone nuts. They would have, Eric Bischoff. And when I did go out there, I just started getting warmed up in my interview. I think for, for the very first time since I've been in the WCW, I was having a really good interview. I was really just starting to get rolling. Right. And they, they were panicking back in the hallways. Eric Bischoff was uh, literally freaking out that I was killing his star in the middle of the ring with my interview and sent Goldberg out. He sent him on about 45 seconds early, which was just about everything I needed done. But it just bothered me that they were so 
no patience. No, no sense of trust or 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 uh, appreciation for a good idea. And it turned out to be then Eric called me a few days later, and it was like everyone's now taking credit for the great idea. What a great idea! And so Eric was very confusing sometimes, and I think.